Spike's got a big mouth. If he was smart, he wouldn't have told us how much he knows about the murder of the Johns. That's what he's holding over Jessica's head. He's blackmailing her into staying with him. We have to find the real killer and clear Jessica's name. Then Spike will have nothing to use against her. If there is another killer. Simon, don't start. If we assume Jessica's guilty, we won't get anywhere. What if we're wrong? If there's another solution to this mystery, it could turn Jessica's life around. <sighs> okay. But then we have to attack this on two fronts. First, see if we can come up with another solution for the dead John's case, and then see what we can dig up on Spike. Maybe there's something in his past that we can use to set Jessica free. Yeah, we have to work fast. You saw the bruises. We have to save Jessica before Spike kills her. Uh, come on. Spike, please, please stop it. You're hurting me. Bad girls get punished. You know that. Honey, why are you whining to your little friends about the way I treat you? No, I, I wasn't. Huh? Huh? Because if you want something to whine about, I can give it to you. And maybe we'll start with that beautiful little face of yours, honey. No, huh? no, I, I, I wasn't complaining. Simone and Paloma wanted to go swimming. I didn't want to mm -hmm. go in, but they pulled me in with all my clothes as a joke. Uh-huh. Then they insisted I take off my wet clothes. That's when they saw all my bruises and accused you of beating me. You better told me that was a lie. Yes, uh, huh? of course I did. I told them that I tripped and fell against a door. <laughs> well, yeah, we do have some dangerous doors around here, don't we? Now listen, you be careful next time, okay? And honey, I need you to stay away from Paloma and Simone. Because if this keeps up, they could get hurt. Wow, or worse. <laughs> Grandmother? I mean, you stole the man she loved and left her with five children to raise all alone. How can you justify that? Captain? No, I, I didn't mean to startle you. I was looking for Teresa. I, you know, I hope she hasn't left for work yet. I'll leave you to your book. Mark, wait. Please. What do you think? Is this okay for the judge? Are you kidding? You look terrific. Maybe I should wear that pink blouse I have with the pearls around the collar. It's softer. I don't know. What do you think? Sheridan, you make the clothes you wear look beautiful, not the other way around, okay? But Chris, this is about the most important day of my life. I want to look my best. I'm adopting James. I can't afford for anything to go wrong. <laughs> and you think the judge will deny your application because you're not wearing the right blouse? Now relax. Everything is set. Okay? You're so silly. What could possibly go wrong? Hmm? I'm married to Chris. He, James, and I are a family. That's what I want. I want us to stay a family. I'm Chris's wife. And I want to be James's mother. seemed awfully preoccupied. Yeah, I am. A little. About work, you know. Uh-huh. Well, looks like you're gonna live. <laughs> For a long time, I hope. Yeah. Well, I guess I should stop hitting the bag before I hurt anyone else, huh? I know, don't stop on my account. Uh, the bag is great if you're trying to work out repressed anger. I said I was finished. Sure. Hey. 
makes sense, though. You hitting back. You're upset that Aunt Sheridan said it's over between the two of you. Fancy. Do it a rest, OK? Now, look, I, I like the way you helped me when I was stressed and the way you just didn't ask any questions. And the way I helped you? I just don't feel like talking right now, OK? Sure. OK? I won't push. I never do. <laughs> what? It's not that funny. Uh, yeah, right. All right, come on, what do you say? Finish our workout. You can hit the bag, and I'll hold it for you. OK. All right? But you'd better be careful. You're not the only one who knocks someone off their feet. You're right. I'm being silly. Nothing can go wrong. Today is as perfect as a day can be. I've never seen you this excited. Nervous is a better word. Well, you've got nothing to be nervous about. Please, can you fix my eye? No. Everything has been set up, and it's basically just a formality. Just think, if everything goes right today, mm -hmm. I will officially be James's mother. Yes. Oh, it has to go well. <laughs> what if the judge changes his mind? It's not going to happen. You're the perfect candidate to adopt a child, Sheridan. You're warm and loving, kind and generous. Doesn't hurt that you're rich and from the most prominent family in the state. So what can go wrong? Nothing, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> you know what we should do? We should stop by the church and light a candle for your first wife, Maureen. I hope she's in heaven looking down and blessing me for what I'm doing today. If we have some time. I only knew her for a few hours before she was taken by the tsunami, but I really liked her, Chris. And you two made a marvelous little boy. Do I look good? Oh, not only do you look good, you look sensational. You're just as handsome as your daddy. <laughs> I love you. I love you. Look, we go make you my real mommy now. Oh, you bet we can. You look well. Thank you. You look nice, too. How have you been? In a word, lonely. I miss you, darling. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's been a difficult time for all of us. Where have you been, Martin? I haven't seen you around since you and Pilar called off the renewal of your wedding vows. I I'm not the one who called it off. I know. I don't know. You know there's not much to talk about. Uh, got a job. Really? Mm, yeah. Doing what? No, I, it's no big deal. Just a way to buy groceries. Huh? You know, I. it's kind of hard trying to rebuild a life at my age and trying to reconnect with my children, but slow going. You know, they still blame me for abandoning them, and I can't say that I blame them, so I'm just trying to get through the day one step at a time. I understand. I don't know about you, but I still feel like I'm a stranger here. You know, I had all these visions of my family welcoming me back into the fold with open arms. Instead, every time I walk into a room, they look up startled as if wondering who I am. I'm sorry about that. You know, I wish you luck in repairing your relationships, but uh, I really have to go. Mark, please. There's something I would like to ask you. I mean, I don't want to sound needy, and even though I am, I... It's just that you're the only one I know I can count on to tell me the truth. Martin, do you think I'm a terrible person? What kind of ridiculous question no, is that? I am serious. I want to know. Fancy, she doesn't know me at all, but she thinks I'm the devil incarnate. She said some very awful things to me. She said that I was selfish, that I, I'm unfeeling, that I'm mean. Honey. You're none of those things. Yes, she is. You both are. 
You're both cruel and selfish. You're both monsters. Did you find anything? Well, I took Spike's rap sheet, which is about as long as my arm, by the way, and I use it to do a much wider search. He's been in trouble since the day he was born, but there's nothing in here serious enough to put him away for a long time. Nothing they can prove, you mean? Noah says he confessed to a murder in Rome. Yeah, but without a body or any proof, he'll walk away from that one, too. We've got to find something. We need to separate Spike from Jessica, or she will never get better. Yeah, but everything in here is minor. It's petty larceny, assault, drug possession. He's been at this ever since he was a teenager. How on earth did he get the license to run those clubs he owned? He worked for Alistair Crane, remember? He must have pulled some strings. Maybe that's why nothing big ever stuck in his criminal record. Well, if there was any justice in this world, we'd find Alistair's rap sheet, too. Well, don't bet on it. It just amazes me to think Jessica married that crook. Oh, we knew something was wrong about it in Rome, and he must have forced her into it, blackmailing her with the information he had on the dead Johns. Why would he, though? What for? Maybe in his own sick, twisted way, he loves her? Huh. I refuse to believe that. What is it? Did you find something? Simone, are we doing the right thing, getting even more mixed up in this? Of course. We're trying to help Jessica. What if, instead of helping Jessica, we end up hurting her? Spike, don't make threats. I'll do whatever you want. Just leave Simone and Ploma alone. Me? Uh, Damn it. Hell, I'm the injured party here. Those nosy friends of yours are coming between a man and his lawfully wedded wife. And if they keep it up, hell, who knows what could happen? Well, hey, I know, but I ain't saying it. Spike, but... don't talk like that. You scare me. Simone and Ploma are about the only two friends I have left. You don't need friends, baby. You got me. But they care about me. They want me to be happy. Sweetheart, you don't think I do? Honey? Mammy pie. <laughs> hey, look at me. Look at me. You know I care about you, don't you? Are you telling me that you don't know that I care about you? No. Are you telling no. me that? No, no, no. Of course not. All right. Sorry, honey. Who, who am I? You're, a, you're my husband. And what do I do? You love me, you adore me, you do your best to make me happy. That's right. That's right. And you know that to be true, don't you, sweetie? Don't you? Sure. Good. See, that's why I always am on the lookout for things to make you look pretty. But, of course, if you don't like stuff like this... Uh, 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 Spike, <laughs> it's gorgeous. Where did you get it? <sighs> Jack. <laughs> you know, the minute I saw that, I said to myself, that is something Jess is just gonna love. And I do. <laughs> But hey, mm. don't you lose this like you lost that bracelet. I got you. I won't. Okay. Come here. I want you to remember something, baby, okay? I'm the only one that gives a damn about you. And uh, I'm the only one that shoots wild and freaky things in the bedroom with at night. I'm the only one who loves you. Not those two bitches you call your friends. Were you listening, Pilar? Because I think eavesdropping is beneath you. I would never eavesdrop on anyone I cared about. But I must disagree with something you said, Catherine. Fancy does know you very well. That's why she despises you. Pilar, please. I can fight my own battles. Look, I did not come here to argue with either one of you. It would be a total waste of my time. Besides, we've said everything we need to say to each other. Yes, you've subjected us to tirades many a time, if that's what you mean. Oh, my God, I was right. You are both monsters. When Alistair died, 
I thought I would never have to use that word again. God, I pity you both. Neither one of you has any idea what life's about. The strength, the joy that one has from doing the right thing, from living a life with decency. I do my best not to despise you, Catherine. You're even in my prayers that someday you'll find peace. That's my penance to help cast off the sin of hatred. But I do despise everything you've done with your life. You stole my husband, you abandoned your children, and then when he left you and tried to reunite with me, you did everything you could to steal him back. You're absurd. How can you stand there feeling sorry for yourself, totally unaware that your depravity is the reason for your sadness? I'm well aware of the consequences of my actions, Pilar. Are you? And you? I can't judge which one of you is worse. I'm going to leave that to God. But you ran off with a married woman, and you left me with five children to fend for ourselves. I was trying to protect you. I would never use that excuse again if I were you. Don't you realize how stupid it sounds? <sighs> You're worse than her, though. You know why? Because she had a real excuse to run away. Alistair was abusing her, but you? You had no excuse whatsoever, Martin. Now that it's over, I can enjoy the joke, too. <laughs> huh? I was the idiot wife. Grateful that you had come back to town with your mistress in hand. Must we? I really was grateful, Martin. I was the only one all those years that kept the faith. And even when I, I would admonish myself for doubting your return, I can't imagine why I ever wanted you back. That's it. Come on, jab harder. Let's go. Get your hands up closer together. Come on. Give me a flurry. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's good. It's good. It really gets your heart going. Yeah, well, that's what it's supposed to. There you go. Thanks. What do you say we uh, hit the treadmill while your heart rate's up, huh? Oh, yeah. Is that all you got? Hell no. Yeah, you know, good cardio on the treadmill is not all about going fast. It's about how high you set your incline. For the Matterhorn? Huh? Yeah. Oh, he's just trying to show me up. Watch this, pal. Do that. You gotta build up your endurance, you know? Yeah, if you say so. <laughs> yeah. You're representing the applicant, Ms. Jenkins? Yes, Your Honor. It's probably the easiest fee I've ever earned. I see no problem with the adoption application whatsoever. And I concur. I've read the application, and everything is in. Apple pie order. Mrs. Crane Booth, I see no problem in this 
adoption moving forward. Mr. Booth, uh, as a formality, would you please confirm that as the boy's biological father, it is your wish that Sheridan Crane Booth legally adopt your son? I do, Your Honor. I could never find my son a better mother. Excellent. Mrs. Crane Booth. Yes, Your Honor. I've lived in harmony all my life. Many of the sorrows of your life have been public knowledge. My sympathies for the recent loss of your son, Marty, and the other child you lost. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, I trust you are looking forward to being a mother again? Oh, yes, Your Honor. I love James with all my heart. I couldn't love him more if he was my own flesh and blood. Well, that only leaves you, young man. What do you think about having Mrs. Crane Booth as a mother? Uh, are, you, are you in favor of it? I want her to be my mommy forever and ever. Oh, then it gives me great pleasure to grant the request for adoption. James Booth, Sheridan Crane Booth is your legal, real mommy forever and ever. Paloma, what is it? What have you found? When did we leave for Rome? Um, I don't know the date exactly, but I know it was mid-April. These files say the last killing was on April 4th, a week or so before we went to Rome with Jessica. So no one killed any Johns after Jessica left the country? No, and there hasn't been another one since she came back, since, since she stopped working the streets. No, I, I don't believe, I, I can't, I can't. Maybe we were right all along. That Jessica's the killer? Simone, you know I love Jessica like she's my own sister. But facts don't lie. From what we've learned, Jessica's the killer. Stop it! Hey, come on, you know you love it. <laughs> It is like my father and my brother could walk in any second. So what? We're married. Honey, I paid for the cow and I want my milk. You're disgusting. <laughs> oh, you didn't say that last night up in the bedroom, did you? Yes, I did. I was tired last night. I didn't want to make love. Have sex. You forced me. You loved it. No, I didn't. You practically raped me. And you know what? You need to stop hanging around with those do-gooders. In fact, you know what? I know just the way to shut your mouth. Just like you like that. You bitch. Honey, I'm just trying to tell you how much I love you. Call 911. Please help me. Please help me. Of course I'll help you, Spike. I'll help you go straight to hell. It makes me sad to listen to you, Pilar. The woman I loved could never be so bitter. The woman you loved is gone. If I had the chance to do it again... You don't. Would... What's done is done. Don't Listen touch to me. me. Don't you ever touch me again. Why did you come here, Pilar? I heard that Martin was on the grounds and I wanted to talk to him. Did you? You know, I've been trying to contact you, but, but you won't return excuse my calls. Excuse me, don't you dare misunderstand me. I don't want to hear any more of your pathetic excuses. I don't want to hear a word that comes out of your mouth unless it's absolutely necessary. Now, you listen. I'm going to do the talking. This has obviously been a very upsetting time for me, for all of us. None of our children can seem to find any sort of happiness, any serenity with their lives. I have counseled Luis. I have told them to move on, to let go of Sharon, and to let her be happy with Chris so that he could find a new love in his life. And God knows I've told my Teresa to forget about Ethan to move on many times in the past, but she never listens to me. She doesn't listen to anyone, but at least I made the effort. And I told our Miguel, forget Charity, mijo. Try to make a life with Kay. And then when I was done, 
speaking to our children, I realized I need to practice what I preach. What? Well, it's just not enough to cancel the renewal of our wedding vows. I want to put you and this pathetic excuse of a marriage in the past for good. I want to move on. I want to live again. I want to love again before it's too late. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Oh. We can't do this. Sir, we can. No, the rules. Well, I've never known a rule yet I couldn't break. Oh, my God, what am I thinking? Especially here. I'm an officer, you're a cadet. We're not even supposed to socialize. Well, we don't have to talk. Oh, fancy. <laughs> hey, I'm a by-the-book kind of guy, okay? Remember that. Oh, I need a shower. James, I'm your mommy. Finally! Yes, <laughs> finally. I have a husband and a son, a perfect family. Everything I've ever dreamed about. Congratulations, young man. I think your new mommy is a real pip. A pip? <laughs> <laughs> he means good. Just think, this is the first time since I can remember that there's nothing bad looming on the horizon. Everything's perfect. It's just clear sailing from here out. Do you mind taking our uh, first official picture as a, uh, a real family? You bet. Thank you. Let's make this your Christmas card. <clears throat> no, wait. Hey. Luis, don't run away. Ma. Uh huh. I'm sorry. I don't mean to push or come on too strong. Oh, well. All right. Look, I do know the rules. Yeah, section eight, paragraph? Paragraph 11. Yeah, 11. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can even understand the no socialization rule. It's to safeguard cadets from being taken advantage of by their superiors. But that's not us, is it? I know you'd never take advantage of me. <laughs> yeah. What about you taking advantage of me? Don't make jokes. I'm trying to be serious. Oh, fancy? Please, I'm not. Please, just what? Let me finish. All right. I know you're hurting because of Aunt Sheridan. I'm not pushing for a heavy duty relationship this very minute, but there is something I need to know that we have a chance together, a future. I like you, fancy. All right. Huh. You like me. No, come on. Really nice, gorgeous, you're a good, caring person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you say I have a good sense of humor, I swear I'll punch you. Yeah, well, I've seen how you punch, so. <laughs> <laughs> Look, seriously, I mean, really, who knows what life has in store for us? Nothing solid, nothing stays the same. I just can't make any guarantees, okay? No, I'm not looking for a guarantee. I just need hope. Hope? Well, of course there's hope. I always have hope. It's the only way I get through the day. <laughs> Fancy. Hey, <laughs> what did I just say? Okay, okay not yes, here. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. Anything you say, sir. <clears throat> uh, see, look. I have to make a deposition at the courthouse next door. Okay, why don't you come with me? As an observer, okay? Cop spends half his work and life in court, so you gotta learn how to testify. I would love to. Sir. Right. I'm hungry. <laughs> Me too. Let's do something about that. Who wants pizza? Me. <laughs> And maybe we can get some ice cream before we go home. I think we can do that. Are you ready, young man? Come on, let's go then. Good luck to all of you. God bless. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, hello. Hello yourself. Uh, uh, I just got adopted. This is my new army. Oh. 
Well, congratulations, huh? Huh. Wow. I'll tell ya, you are the luckiest little boy in the world, you know that? Because you just got yourself the best mommy in the world. You take care of her, okay? You hear me? Yes. All right. Good boy. You don't mean it. What did you expect, Martin? I waited for decades for you to come home. And even when you did in body, you weren't there in spirit. And when you agreed to renew our vows, you still had Catherine in your heart and in your bed. No, we Catherine, didn't. Catherine, please. We have no marriage. Not legally and not as far as the church is concerned. And if I'm going to have a chance at a new life, I can't keep carrying you around like unwanted baggage. I want a divorce, and I want an annulment from the church in case I ever decide to get married again. No. You are in no position to object. I did a lot of thinking when I was shot. I almost lost my life, Martin. And I decided that I want to live whatever is left of my life, I want to live it to the fullest. Isn't that what you want, too? Pilar. Martin, I have moved on. You should, too. Pilar, no, wait! Martin, please, let her go. She's right. This clears the way for us to be together legally, because once she gets the annulment, we can be married. And, darling, we can finally have the life that we dreamed of. I'm sorry, Catherine. We can't. We just can't. I hate you! That's what I'm talking about. Just how you like it. Just how you like it, baby. Get off me, Spike! No! You know you want it? I said no! Damn! Oh, you little bitch. Spike. I'm sick and tired of being used as your punching bag. Leave me alone. Shoot, after I gave this nice diamond necklace. Huh? Tip for tap, baby, you know what I mean? I'm not laughing. Why not? Ooh, why don't you go ahead and stab me then? Stab me! <sighs> you know, man, you're impossible. You are, I mean, those damn clothes are turn off to me anyway. I'm gonna go upstairs and I'm gonna get changed. You get your butt up there pronto. I need you to help me relax. Oh, and sweetheart, wake up, because I'll tell you what, you are a real sort of miss in the conjugal duties, you know what I mean? And I get what I pay for. See you upstairs. What can I do? There's no way out. Why can't he just die? Paloma, no. We have to start thinking outside the box. Because Jessica's inside the box killing Jones. Stop saying that. Why? That's what we were thinking since the very beginning. And let me tell you something. If someone did to me what Spike did to Jessica, I'd be killing Jones right now. Oh, I don't want to hear this. Simone, facts don't lie. The killing stopped when Jessica left town. And they didn't start up again when she came back when she was off the streets. But there, there could be dozens of explanations for that. The simplest explanation is usually the right one. No, stop, stop, stop. It is a coincidence. It has to be. I've known Jessica ever since she was a little girl. And up until a couple of years ago, she was just my best friend Kay's little sister. But now I know her as well as I know Whitney. Simone, she's the one who woke up time and time again in bed with the dead. Okay, Paloma, stop. All right, we're not going to get anywhere if we hang on to the silly notion that Jessica is the killer. Simone, 
They're training me to be a cop. I can't ignore evidence. And I pray you're right about Jessica. But if she's not the killer, we have to find out who is before anyone else knows what we're doing here, okay? Oh, I sure did. Come on, let's go get some. Congratulations, James. And all of you. I hope you'll all be very happy. Thank you very much. I'm gonna go get the car and I'll meet you up front. Okay. See you later, Nancy. Luis. You all have fun today. You hear? Hey, James. You be a good boy, okay? Because I'll bet if you're bad, Sheridan could be really strict. Congratulations again. Thank you. Come on, let's go. Bye, James. You handled that beautifully, but I know it must have hurt. No, I'm fine. Sheridan's chosen that life for herself, and if that makes her happy, then I'm happy for her. Well, I think it's time to do a little work on making yourself happy. I bet Aunt Sheridan wants the same thing. Thanks. You're a really good friend, you know that? Anytime. Are you sad? <laughs> no, I'm not sad. Are you a little crazy person? <laughs> People cry when they're sad and when they're happy. And right now I have tears of joy because you're gonna be mine forever. I love you. I love you so, so much. Give me a hug. Oh. No one can ever find out that little Ethan is really Ethan's son. I think the answer is in that envelope that mysteriously disappeared. Who am I at the altar with? 